All right, yo, what up? It's Chris working on a new poem about, uh, well, you'll see what it's about. <clears throat> I don't want to yell, so I'm going to get close to the camera. I was contemplating the contemporary state of opposition to art in the United States of America, and more specifically, my friend circle. Let's pull the veil on a thin girdle. Without obfuscating the conversation with the implementation of incendiary takes on propositional remarks in reference to the price of stakes of your character, ironically I'd make the point the soil has typically been fertile. So let's take this slow as ten turtles. Art should not be easy, but it should be accessible. How do you define vandalism, street art, or classified graffiti? And what makes a knick-knack and what becomes a collectible? What's classic and what's kitsch? You ask me what the purpose of the verses and bars are and expect a two-minute soundbite? Bruh, this is a 10-day feast of famine, abandoned children, and abandoned buildings with a chasm between stability and sustainability as wide as the Grand Canyon. It's like I wrote this in crayon. It's a glass-blown lithograph mixed with a pictograph, meme, symbol of an anagram reflected on your retina as a palindrome. This should be described as alchemy. So why would I make art to oppose? Why wouldn't I make art to let you know people from D.C. got something to say and y'all need to feel this love that comes from below? I've been an outcast since I got my ass beat for drawing on a wall in my mom's house again and again and again and again. So is that where anti-authority begins? Hold up. I began at the end. All art is in media's rest, so measure the half of the resonance in every single note. They say artists are so narcissistic with all the talk of self-sacrifice, so how about I mute my mouth like Neo in the Matrix, then slip my throat and splash blood on fur coats. It's transubstantiation in every word, wrote, and spoke. <laughs> yeah, this is not a serene painting of a small green wooden rowboat on a stony pebbled beach reminiscent of Cape Cod with the sunlight peeking through breaking clouds and light pastel oils framed in mahogany. Maybe this is Albrecht Dürer's Christomorphic portrait where in the image of man, humans create God and one might confuse the fall of Lucifer for the five dialogues and Plato's apology. Or is this closer to the Caravaggio's David and Hedda Goliath where you can't decide whether or not to focus on the horror or the analogy to biblical authority while experiencing looking at such gorgeous mastery? <laughs> Art is not design. Art is not content. Art is not a tool to sell other objects. Art is made to be consumed. It's ironic that art and food are essential to life function, yet the corporations that manufacture and support the most overproduction are unabashedly and overtly involved in direct forms of human and global destruction. Like Philip Morris owned Kraft Foods. Louis Vuitton Hennessy owns black music in America. Okay, do you see the parallel lines at the right angle so that you can triangulate the point I'm trying to make? It's Liechtenstein Microdots, Microsoft Windows and Gemini, Bard, Open, AI, Intelligence, Official, Art, Mimicry. Not simple mimesis. Minecraft, mental real estate, and Neo-Columbus colonial occupation of your creative energy. So nah, I'm not playing that game. I'm not here to celebrate the abusers. I'm not here to laud the disposable and lie about myself in order to get you to buy what I make. I make what I make and take it around the world and share it with as many people that appear to be receptive. Imagine what happens when the films aren't guided by the writers or the humans that direct them, but the focus groups, algorithms, and financiers that never made films but are supposed to have silently invested in them. What will be the outcome? How will humans generate income? Sidebar. Wait, actually, opening argument. I am not a jukebox. I am not a dancing monkey with a pair of cymbals glued to my hands that you can wind up and play based on your whimsy. I am a person that makes more than I can describe and I love the life of emotional exchange and primal communication. So if I love it so much, why am I so oppositional? The convergence of music, dancing, singing, and painting are sacred science and practices of a lost ritual. The mission can't stop no matter how impossible. Master art having faith in a hysteria and leaning into what people say is emotional and irrational. So why wouldn't I make it as easy as possible for a potential audience to approach the aesthetic embodiment of a creative idea? I should try to remove all obstacle to observation. Be concise, be direct, use references and context that are rooted in familiarity. Know the demographics. Make sure you've done market research. Try to be similar enough to those in the market while simultaneously unique and original. Yeah, that's boring and corny and trite. Not every person's supposed to be a fan and not every fan gives a fuck about art. Does the engineer ask the opinion of Ja Rule when they are designing suspension bridges and skyscrapers? But music is different. Why? 
how. Is my job so easy that anybody that enjoys the product of the work in general is valid in making a critique about my performance specifically? Well, everybody wants to be a rock star, a pop star, but almost nobody got bars. You've heard the idea that to be famous, your work has to resonate with people from the age 8 to 80. Maybe I'm not oriented towards 8 to 80. Yeah, kids like my rap, but what the hell am I doing only making art that a fourth grader can understand? Conversely, I did not make music for my mother to like, and I definitely would not be targeting septuagenarians. They're not coming to shows. <clears throat> so what's my niche? People that love life so much, they're willing to work with these morsels and kernels of heartfelt human experiment transcribed into whatever medium I choose. They like breadcrumbs, the puzzles, the mazes, the exercise. We like the activity. Let's push ourselves to the limit of when an artistic experience moves from novel and enjoyable to an effort in stamina. I'm talking extended durational performance art where the flogging and self-flagellation is intriguing initially, but after the 10th strike, a question emerges. Is this just the start? How long will this last? And four minutes later, 80 lashes later, while nude in the center of a white room somehow called a black box theater, you begin to ask, does the artist even enjoy this? Are they doing this for my pleasure or their pleasure? Who likes this? Are they doing it just to make a name or attention seeking? Or is it about something totally else? Meaning, symbol, signification. See, when art becomes devotion, mixed with vocation, you take no vacation because creating is not an occupation. It's a reflection of the global population, no matter national citizenship or state sanctioned documentation. Regardless of remuneration from patrons, you come to a realization. Keep making, which you are making and making more creations because the process of creating can save us.